going to the U.S. premiere of The Scary of 61st Street. I um, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I directed it and wrote it with uh, my partner, not in a gay way, Madeline Clinton, <laughs> who's also in the film, um, as well as Betsy Brown, who's also here, and um, Anna Capshian has a lovely cameo, and Eli Kessler did the score in there. Also here, as is my editor, Sophie Cora. And I think that's everybody. Um, okay, I hope you enjoy it. Viewer discretion advised. Um, and we're going to do a Q&A after with Patrick Sandberg, so stick around. Woo! Here's her Dasha's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Who here has heard of Jeffrey Epstein? Because I have it. Um, no, but I'm Lynn. What is it like to have sex with and strangle your best friend Dasha on screen? I love it. <laughs> There's so much I can say. And you know me, I'm very long-winded. So. Seems like a genre movie seemed like it would be a fitting, mm, that it would, it would be a good fit because it was so like horrifying and did make you feel so crazy. And then the story, I don't know, the story evolved really organically. I mean, a lot of people compare it to the giallo references, obviously, but that wasn't even really at the, the forefront. All of those like style choices kind of happened out of dealing with all of like the references that the movie deals with. But I watched The Tenant, you know, and that gave us a really good like structure for a movie where someone moves into a house where something is wrong. I mean, a lot of it was like us acting, acting things out, and then like using the voice memo app, and then maybe kind of like blowing up uh, the script writing software on the TV with an HDMI cable, and so it just kind of like acting really things out. Yeah, really yeah, normal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of like that scene in the movie, I feel like. It's like you guys collaborating and it's like that scene. I always imagine that. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're dead on with that. Yeah. yeah. We had a scene where long, we, were, we were printing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really yeah. Telling the story. story. Because there was so much visual ephemera around the Epstein stuff that you wanted to, there's so much information that you have to convey. So that was challenging. And yeah, there was a scene where we literally were like printing stuff. Well, why don't you guys talk about how you came up with this story together? Um, well, as I've said in many interviews, because I can't seem to come up with a more interesting anecdote. We were going to write a short film, <laughs> and then the script became longer. And we started scripting in September of 2019, Yes. after Jeffrey Epstein was murdered. Um, and we we both, I guess, had a lot of, like, my, I definitely characterized my energy at the time as manic. 
uh, and that sort of quest for answers and justice proved to be very unsatisfying and so you're talking about a bit, a bit, yeah. Um, now when you guys cast that very central, very extreme. Well, I'd known Betsy before and I'd seen her in a film that her brother made called Assholes, where she also gives a very um, powerful, boundary-pushing, transgressive performance. I knew that she had it in her. And I saw actually a photo of your young parents, I think, where your mom was wearing this pink top and looked so much like Virginia. Wait, I think it was. Oh my God. Was that a picture it's, of your parents? It's not my mom. Wow, I don't know this. This is very exciting to learn new things about the cast behind, behind the scenes. Yeah, so there's a like, photo on your Instagram of your belly. Yeah, is it's it not my your mom, mom and my uncle. Yeah. And she does look exactly like. The, the sleeveless v-neck, pale yeah. pink, mm -hmm. and some sort of low-rise jeans, and the guy with an old man, his yeah. uncle, just, he kind of looked, he had the wrong look in his eye. So yeah, it seems... That's my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's... That seems my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> You're not um, Jewish, Patrick. That's true. Mm -hmm. Stop trying. <laughs> I know. Someday. The bird got my name, people always think they have it. And it was. And I walked over and I took a picture of his front door with that like J E yeah. on the side and I like posted it. <laughs> and it was almost like all these people were like, Oh, you can just go there and like I remember being there in the neighbor in front of his house because that was his real house. Yeah, the J E was gone. They took oh. it down after he died. We somehow were totally unbothered for like five hours, just her doing what she was doing over and over. It was over. like three hours. <laughs> That's the, the, the still three long. is five, five still is four. It was like four in the morning also. Yeah, it was really late at night. And the guys who like get picked up by their drivers in the morning to get taken to their little jobs down on Wall Street where, you know, like those cars were accumulating as it was still, the sun was mm -hmm. down. Nobody said anything. Mm -hmm. Totally unfazed. Well, it's yeah, beautiful. I was thinking that too, and this was like... We thought, sure, why not? <laughs> Let's keep writing. Because nobody thought. likes a 27-minute short film. Yeah. Exactly. That's true. I mean, sorry if you've ever made one. <laughs> yeah, but like... Keep it under 20, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Well, you had made some short films prior to this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, was that, what was that journey like, like first deciding to shoot on 16 and then like being able to? Mm, I really didn't want to make it not on 16 because I thought that it just would have elevated that, it just would elevate the whole thing and make it working with like a finite resource just makes everything, makes the whole process more special, not just like you know, people up here like, just throw a filter on it, like the Joker or whatever. <laughs> it can look just like film, but we all know that's not true. And beyond that, it like, just, it changes everything about everything. The we, process is very different. Yeah. Like, you can feel it. It seems like you guys, it was a non-negotiable for you guys. Exactly. I remember you were saying, you said like, it's just so funny that our perverted little movie is on film. Like it was like a <laughs> act of defiance. Yeah. And totally the right choice, yeah. Shout out to Adam Mitchell, Adam our producer, Mitchell, who producer. started the get go. He's very like, yeah, it's very, very enthusiastic about shooting on 16. So once you were measured tone is no longer appropriate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. I thought that was well sad. Was that part of your intent behind kind of the uh, the vibe of the movie? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I felt so good as to finish it. Yeah. Incredible every single moment. Heavenly. It was a great set. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we didn't have work that day. No. Which is insane. And it was pretty chill, relaxed, yeah. <laughs>
Should we take it over to the oh, yeah. audience? Is the audience Sorry, okay. Yeah. Um, first of all, would you please sign some books of mine? <laughs> what about some Nazi books? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sure. uh, the podcast reading list ever since I graduated college. I guess you could say it's been kind of like my grad school, so I take it really seriously. Okay. I learned a lot and totally shaped my whole perspective on the world. So thanks. Great. Awesome. Both of these. I mean, I'll sign them later. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that's a really good question. I think she's very... Oh, I already pointed at him, but I'll point at you next. Sorry, Patrick, you should be pointing. I Sorry, I'll start pointing. Yeah. Stripe shirt. Yeah. <laughs> This was my first time really watching it with an audience, actually. But no, I thought a lot of the laughs landed and stuff. And then, I don't know, I wasn't expecting people to be like gasping or screaming or anything. But the, the goods, it seems like an appropriate audience response. The silence in those moments surprised me because when I watched it alone, I was laughing hysterically the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much ever. I was rewinding. You're a very sick boy. Guys. You get to do that at home. <laughs> I was rewinding like all of um, Maddie's reaction shots and stuff like that, and I was like, this is genius. <laughs> <laughs> Another yeah. question? Yeah, very early on, it was kind of going to be like the twist of the little, the short film. Um, and I really liked it. I love that moment in Eyes Wide Shut. Um, Eyes Wide Shut was also, I guess it was like the 20th year anniversary. And so it was, there was a renaissance of it with it in like the public consciousness. And then after Epstein's death, it was like, I think it took a while for people to really see what Eyes Wide Shut was really about, because it was a little bit maligned when it came out as this like, okay, boomer marital drama that like wasn't ah, even sexy, you know, but the real message of Eyes Wide Shut, like all of Kubrick's films is about like power structures and that what he was really getting at with the subtext of Eyes Wide Shut was still really vital and, um, so yeah, it was all that was always gonna be part of it, and I and I think maybe at one point we were like, maybe she gets a note that's like eyes wide shut, and I was like, no, just make it the note that there's nothing better than that note, and it's I say it's like it's not an homage to to Kubrick because obviously it's not made meticulously the way that Kubrick's films are, but it's sort of like a love letter. It sort of is meant to. Um, honor his like world view and his understanding about uh, global power. I sort of we came, I came to making the film because of how futile I felt in the in the face of all the the Epstein stuff, uh, which is why it also ends the way that it does. And yeah, I, like you kind of get burnt out on it. And now, yeah, but a lot of people love to ask me like, "What do you think Ghislaine is up to?" And I'm like, "I don't, I can't, I don't, I have, <laughs> I can't keep doing. I like did my part." <laughs> no longer follow it. No, yeah. Don't have the stamina for it. It does feel like such a fuck you in so many ways to them, like on top of, for the obvious reasons, but I was thinking to myself watching these scenes where you're collaging certain imagery and clips that were real into the film and thinking about how normally you would have to clear rights for this sort of stuff, but it's like these people don't deserve rights. <laughs> <laughs> 
hope we don't have to clear this. <laughs> I'll go right at him. Right at him? Yeah. Yeah. Does the lawyer have any questions? <laughs> you. Um, yeah, I, it happened, it just, it, there was an opportunity to, through, uh, when I met my producers, they were interested in financing it, and it wasn't, um, there were a lot, a lot of parts of that did feel like an uphill battle, but that wasn't really one of them, and I think, well, I think genre is, easier to do even if it has like art house trappings i think if you um build something in the in the genre space there's sort of a business model for it seeming like a sounder investment for for film financers and now it's on shutter and now it's on shutter or it will be it will be yeah, yeah in december very cool yes okay. I worked uh, like pretty closely with Eli. Well, we had also my editor Sophie um, had a great woo, woo Sophie Cora. Woo! She, um, she did a fantastic temp score um, that is different from Eli's, obviously, but that gave us like a good template and like pacing for. But there's a lot of music in it. I mean, Eli really went above and above and beyond, and it helped the film so much. Um, and we, yeah, we watched it together and talked through sort of, I don't know a lot about music, so a lot of the notes that I gave him were very like psychological or like, I remember once I was like, can we make it sound like sandier? Like, I don't know, I don't understand really anything about composition, but we worked really well together. And the soundtrack is available now on Hollywood Records. I made that one up. <laughs> there is going to be a soundtrack. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> they're, they're, they are putting up the, the soundtrack. Any more questions? Yeah, Back there. What are the prospects for a UK release? <laughs> the people of the United Kingdom all agree with me, of us, mm -hmm. and everything we said. <laughs> and I stand with their. Yeah, it's playing at uh, it's playing at like a festival in Manchester in a couple weeks. It's like there are gonna be some screenings in the UK and then maybe a small theatrical run, but I don't know. <laughs> I should know that. Yeah. Are there any British people here? What? <laughs> What's <wrong with> <laughs> I just want to know what you thought. Yeah. It's been well received. From the people in the UK that have seen it, I guess. Well, well, thank you all for coming. Thank you. 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 And congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.